for this we are going to go in and out of boat pose so we can lean back on the hands and bring the feet up and then back out again or you can go into it fully coming into it so that's boat pose so we just move in and out of it as I say three times holding on the third so we'll start off nice and gently nice straight back and then leaning back and so we're just strengthening the core muscles here in holding this position but seeing as it's the first one we won't hold it for a particularly long time and then we just come out of it and in easy pose we are going to turn from side to side so uh, inhale and as you exhale bring your right hand to your left knee bring your left hand behind you look over your left shoulder and then slowly inhale to the front and then to the other side hand on the left knee twisting to the right inhale to the front and again and to the right exhaling into the twist the way we usually do in yoga and then this time we're going to hold the position so we twist to the left and hold stretch up through the crown of the head so you have a nice straight spine on your exhales you may want to try twisting that a little bit further And then inhale to the front exhale to the right and breathing nice and steadily now and again maybe using the exhales to just see if you can extend the twist then inhaling back to the front and we can just lean forwards over where we were and we can come into plank so if you're not comfortable holding plank just move the knees a little bit further back the idea being that you then are putting most of your weight on the hands but your knees are helping otherwise we're, we're starting off in extended child and then we're coming up into plank and then back down into extended child so as i say you can just stretch the hands forward and come up in in that way so that most of the weight is still on, on the arms and you're still strengthening the arms and the shoulders okay so on the third one again we'll hold the, whichever plank position you choose so coming forwards and up and then back again and again So on this third one, just make sure you're in a comfortable position to hold plank for four or five breaths. Check that 
you're not uh, curving, you're not sort of sticking your bottom up in the air. You want to aim for a nice straight line from shoulder to heels. And then we can come down onto the knees and this time we're going to cat cow three times and then hold each position. So exhale into cat, arching your back, pulling your stomach in. Inhale into cow, dropping the belly, lifting <coughs> straight ahead. Exhale back into cat. And into cow. And our last one into cat and holding the pose. Feel the stretch across the back. Notice the curve of the spine. Holding the stomach pulled in, even on our gentle inhales. So strengthening the core by pulling the stomach in towards the spine. So we can compare the contraction of the muscles across the front and the stretch of the muscles of the back. And then on your next inhale, drop the belly, come into cow, feel the stretch of the muscles across the front, you stretch them all the way across the front of your body and you're contracting the muscles of the back. Looking straight ahead. And then we tuck the toes underneath to come up into downward facing dog. So you want to move your hands a little bit further forwards and then come up into that upside down V, feet close together. And then you can either bend one knee and then the other nice and gently. Or if you want, you can extend the left leg out behind you and then bring it through towards your head. Extend it back out again and bring it down. And the same with the right leg, extend it, bring it towards your head, back out and down. So repeating that. And the last one, but we won't hold the pose with one leg up. We'll just perform the movement. And then come back into downward facing dog and just spend a few breaths in downward facing dog. Remember the things to check in downward facing dog that your hands are actively pushing down into the floor. So you're strengthening your fingers by pushing down, you're strengthening your palms, your wrists, your forearms. And of course, you're getting that good flow of blood to the brain. And then we walk the feet to the hands. Just spend a moment in ragdoll. Wriggle your shoulders, nod your head and shake your head. And then having released the tension from shoulders and the upper back and the neck, you can just relax into it for a moment. And then we can inhale up. And the next pose is triangle. So we're doing exactly the same action as we do in 
the second part or the latter part of Drew Yoga where we dip into it three times but this time of course we hold the triangle pose. So you want about two thirds of the distance that you'd use for your warrior pose. You want that between your feet. You want the back of the left hand against the inside of the left thigh and the right hand is stretching up towards the ceiling. And the thing to remember here also is don't worry about how far down the leg you slide that left hand. Think more about getting that nice stretch and the contraction on the other side and keeping that right shoulder back. Don't, don't bring that round just to get another inch or two further uh, down with the left hand. So, um, inhale. And then on the exhale, just dip down and come up again. Exhale down and up. And exhale down as far as you want to go. And then just holding it. And notice, yes, the contraction on the left side and the stretch on the right but also anywhere where you're feeling resistance so i'm feeling it funnily enough in the left calf back of the left knee but we all feel stretches feel resistance in different places and then we can inhale up and turn the feet around same on the other side So a nice little dip and inhale up and then on the third one holding the pose again keeping that left shoulder back noticing the area of resistance and here for me it's the back of the thigh so yeah a nice stretch for my hamstring there i can feel and then inhaling up ready for the next one uh, and the next one we again uh, fluctuating between two positions so it's chair and from chair we lean forwards bring the hands behind the back and we come into a standing forward fold with the arms up towards the ceiling so it's that kind of a movement three times nice and slowly so we can start off coming into chair and then as we exhale just coming over so we're straightening the legs we're bringing the hands up behind us and then we're coming back into chair into the standing forward fold maybe going a little bit further this time back into chair and holding chair this time then straightening the legs coming back and as you come to the last exhale make the most of it see if you can maybe get a little bit further bend bring the arms a little bit further round And then inhaling back up. Okay, so 
that then takes us to some lateral bends for the spine. So we interlink the fingers and bring them up overhead, palms to the ceiling, which is the way we do in Qigong. And we exhale, bending to the left and looking up, if this feels okay for your neck, looking up to the right and then inhale up and exhale to the other side, looking up to the left. Inhale up, exhale bending to the left and looking up to the right. Inhale, exhale bending to the right, looking up to the left. Inhale up and then this time we hold the pose. And coming up again, and to the left, and inhaling up, and then we come on to our old favorite, the warrior flow. So nice wide stance, left foot turned out to the left, knee above the ankle ideally, or behind it is fine, as long as it's not in front of it. Setting your foot, your back foot, anywhere from 90 degrees to 30 or 40 degrees, to the same, uh, to the angle of the left foot, that's up to you, whichever feels most comfortable. But the feet are actively pushing out and the spine is vertical. We start off in warrior two, focusing on the fingernail of the middle finger. And then we twist the hand round and come up into reverse warrior as we inhale. Nice stretch and exhale back through warrior two into side angle. We inhale into side angle, remember? Nice stretch, back into warrior two. And twice more, inhaling up, exhaling, inhaling, and exhaling. And then we'll inhale up into warrior, into reverse warrior and hold the pose. So we're feeling the stretch as we breathe into the left lung. We're feeling the contraction and the compression on the liver on the right side. And then we can, on an exhale, come back through and inhale into side angle. So now we're feeling the stretch as we breathe into the right lung. And then we can come up into warrior two to finish. So maybe checking that the back arm is parallel with the floor and then focusing on that drishti point, the fingernail of the middle finger. Are your arm, are your legs still strong? Are they still providing a stable base? Are you still pushing down through the feet, strengthening the muscles of the legs? Great, so now let's do the same on the other side. So turning the right foot out to the right and again, strengthening the legs, checking where the knee is in relation to the ankle. Vertical spine, warrior two. 
Turn the palm over and inhale up into the reverse warrior. And exhale out of it. Inhale into side angle. Nice stretch and exhale out of it. Reverse warrior. And through warrior two. Into side angle. And back into warrior two. Inhaling up into reverse warrior and holding. And then through warrior two into side angle and holding. And then back into warrior two and holding. Okay, from here now we're going to go into crescent moon. So for that we just drop the back leg and we come into a low lunge. You might want to adjust the position of your low lunge so that you can feel the stretch in that, well in both hips, <coughs> one being stretched in one position and the other one being stretched out in the other, uh, at the other angle. So we're getting that nice uh, stretch on the hips and the hips are facing forwards um, and then what we're going to do is come up into crescent moon and then come into a twisting lunge bringing the left elbow onto the right knee and then back into crescent moon and back into the twisting lunge okay so inhale up into crescent moon and exhale down bringing the hands together left elbow onto right knee inhale back up i know it's hard to keep your balance in this isn't it crescent moon nice back bend back into the twisting lunge inhale up and we can hold this one And you can have your hands pushing your palms together or linked or just pointing up to the ceiling the way hands are. And then bringing that left elbow across and your hands here again they can be clasped or you can have a fist into a palm whatever feels right for you. Notice your nice twist in the spine. Okay, and then we can do the same on the other side. Swapping over. Again, maybe adjusting till you feel you're in the right kind of position for your hips. And then inhaling up. Crescent moon and back into our twisting lunge with the right elbow on the left knee. Inhaling back into crescent moon. Exhaling into the twisting lunge. Inhale up again and this time we hold it. Coming in 
into your twisting lunge. And we can come out of that, placing both hands beside the left foot and then bringing the left foot back, coming into a prone position, ready for our back bend. And it can be Sphinx, Seal or Cobra, the same way as we do in Drew. The only difference being we go in and out of it three times, holding on the third, of course. So just a reminder, if it's Sphinx, your hands are spread out nice and wide, elbows under your shoulders and you're looking straight ahead. With Seal, you change the position of the thumbs, so they're pointing straight ahead, you straighten the arms. With Cobra, hands under the shoulders, elbows tucked into the ribs, and you're using the back muscles initially for the lift, and then the hands to take over, lifting the belly button, but not the hips off the mat. So three times, inhale up. And exhale down, turning your head to one side. Inhale up. And exhale down, turning your head to the other side. Inhale up and hold. So if you're in Sphinx, you're looking straight ahead. If you're in Seal or Cobra, you're looking slightly upwards. And then we can roll the spine down from that and we can go into cobblers. So from cobblers, that's like butterfly wings. We can adopt the kind of diamond shape that is used in yin yoga or you can bring your heels in close by taking a hold of the toes and the top of the feet with both hands and pulling the heels in closely. Nice straight back and then you can either flap the butterfly wings or you can inhale stretching up through the crown of the head and then as you exhale just folding forwards as far as you can and then coming back up again and do that three times on the third time lowering the head as far as you can and just uh, holding that. So inhale up and then go into the butterfly wings or exhale forwards. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. and exhale coming down and holding so don't force relax the legs relax the knees towards the floor you're probably feeling it at the hips nice hip opener And then we inhale, straightening up, nice straight spine. Hands to the outsides of the knees to bring the knees back up, stretching the legs out in front. And then we come into <coughs> a wide angle. And again, what we're going to do is walk the arms out in front of us and inhale back up again three times and on the third one we hold the position 
And if you like, you can take hold of your ankles or your calves and hold the position in that way. So inhale up and then exhale, folding forwards. Inhale. And exhale again. Inhale up. And exhale again. And as I say, this time I like to bring my hands out to take hold of something to just encourage that forward fold for four or five breaths. Take one last inhale and on the exhale, just see if I can move that extra little bit further forwards. And then inhale back up again. Okay, so for the next one, we are going into the uh, head to knee pose. So if we bring the left insole left sole of the foot to the inside thigh of the right leg and then you can either um, do this the way we do in drew yoga flowing through it or you can go into the stretch and flex so are you going to do the flow Anne, and hold on the third and i'll do the stretch and flex and hold on the third so inhale stretching up exhale folding forwards and then if you do the same as me come back onto the left forearm stretch the right side exhale back into the head to knee inhale and stretch exhale and flex inhale and stretch and we won't hold that but we will hold the head to knee inhaling up straightening the spine stretching up and exhaling the hands to the sides and then the same on the other side just turn around so you can see what I'm doing on this side inhale stretching up exhale coming forwards and then inhale onto the right forearm Stretching the left side, exhale back, inhale and stretch, exhale and flex. Last one. And then inhaling up and exhaling the arms out to the sides and down. Nice forward bend deserves a compensatory back bend with the pelvic raise leading to the bridge if you're comfortable with that or if the bridge is a bit uh, tough just leave that one out. So soles of the feet on the floor, hands, palms down on the floor so that they can help you, support you as you peel the spine up off the mat. 
So inhale as you raise the spine, and remember you're flexing the spine as you bring it up. You can bring it to a straight line, knee, hips, shoulder, especially if you have any back problems, you might prefer to do it that way. And then exhaling, rolling the spine down, bit at a time, to the tailbone. Inhale up. And exhale down. Inhale up. And this time, if you're going into bridge, bring the hands together underneath your back. So your hands are clasped together and then shuffle up onto one shoulder and then the other. And just hold that. Don't overdo the bend in the spine. You just want a nice, comfortable back bend in the spine. And then undo your hands first and place them palms down to support you. Move the shoulders out and then roll the spine down again. Tailbone being the last to come back into contact with the mat. Okay. That then brings us to twisting and this is a good exercise for the core so we're lying on the back I'll just show you quickly first you want your hands out to the sides to give you the the leverage to move the rest and then you you can have your knees bent and move from side to side and when it comes to holding on the third one, relax and just let the knees rest on one side for four or five breaths. And then the same on the other side for four or five breaths. You can take it up a notch by instead of laying them down as you turn to the side, just stopping an inch or two above the mat and then taking them back. And of course, on the third one then, it's a case of holding them like that for four or five breaths. You can make it tougher still by extending the legs and either dropping them to the mat and bringing them back, dropping them to the mat and bringing them back, or Probably the toughest is stopping just an inch or two above the mat and holding that for four or five breaths. So, make your choice and then we'll start off and just lower the feet to one side. Inhale as you come back up to 12 o'clock. Exhale to the other side. Inhale as you come back. Exhale. Inhale back. Exhale. Inhale back. And here comes the fun part. Exhale and then hold for four or five breaths. And you're either getting a really nice twist or you're getting a really nice twist and a strengthener, not just for the abdomen, but you'll feel your right arm and shoulder working as you hold both feet over to the right there or both knees over to the right. You feel that strengthening the arm and the shoulder. And then on an inhale, bring it back up to 12 o'clock and exhale down to the other side. Notice the shift to the left arm.
and then after four or five breaths inhaling back up and relaxing the feet down and then the next exercise is just stretching the hamstrings so you may want to use a belt for this but I'm just going to use my hands basically we bring the left leg up and then the hands come behind the thigh and just slide your hand as high up the leg as you want to bringing pulling it over and feeling that nice stretch in the hamstring there if you want you can take the first two fingers of your left hand using them like scissors and popping them between the big toe and the second toe wrapping them round and clenching with the thumb and then holding that and your leg doesn't have to be locked you just need to be in a position where you can feel a nice stretch in the hamstring there maybe on the last exhale seeing if you can get that extra little bit of stretch into the hamstring and then coming back down and the same on the other leg maybe just holding behind the thigh or behind the calf or going up for the big toe out of that nicely and then our last pose is coming in and out of happy baby so let me remind you happy baby happy baby we're lying on our backs we bring the hands up to the inside of the uh, feet and wrapping them around the arches of the foot and then we bring the feet out so that the knees are just above the armpits the calves are vertical and then we pull the knees down towards the armpits and from that we come slowly crossing the ankles taking hold of the opposite foot and pulling the legs in so that the thighs are pulled pulled down towards the chest and then we release and go back into happy baby okay three times and on the third as usual we hold so we can start off with happy baby make sure that you are comfortable in the position you, you feel that you have it right and you're getting that nice hip opener and then just crossing the ankles over taking hold of the opposite foot and then pulling them down and across back into happy baby and then maybe crossing the ankles the other way and pulling down back into happy baby and then holding happy baby Feel the opening of the hip joints nicely there. And then finishing by crossing the ankles, taking hold of the opposite foot and pulling the feet in, pulling the legs in towards the abdomen and again four or five breaths and we 
can come out of that and congratulate yourselves on going through those exercises. They can be quite challenging. So well done, everybody. Time now for our well-earned relaxation. So if you're lying on your back or lying with your feet up against the wall, closing your eyes gently and palms are relaxed and facing upwards towards the ceiling, feet are flopping out to the side and we can focus on the scalp, relaxing the scalp, being aware maybe of a tingle in the scalp. Imagine if you like a white light glowing right on the crown of the head and spread, spreading delicious relaxing tingles out across the scalp and to the forehead and feeling that white light come to the forehead and again a nice tingle there a nice relaxing tingle spread into the eyelids relaxing the eyelids and the cheeks Spread into the jaw. And then the muscles of the neck. All the muscles around the neck and many muscles around the neck. And going inside the neck to the throat, relaxing the throat. Coming down to the shoulders. And then let that white light travel down the arms. To the elbows and the forearms, the wrist. To the hands. And maybe noticing a tingle in the fingers, the glow of life energy of prana, and let's come back to the chest. Being aware of the heart and lungs. The shoulder blades where they're touching the mat. Relaxing all these areas. Relaxing the spine from top to bottom. Relaxing the abdomen. The muscles, the digestive system the vital organs, the thighs, the knees and calves, ankles, the feet, the soles of the feet, and the toes. And then just doing a body scanner, seeing if a little area of tension may have crept in here or there. And if so, letting it go with a nice, slow relax. Just enjoying letting go. As always, you can remain in the position of relaxation, continuing to 
gain the benefits of relaxing those muscles and joints after the work that we've put them through. So you can stay there as long as feels right for you and remember that when you come out don't jump up quickly but keep that calmness keep that peacefulness and take it into the rest of your day so maybe just wriggling fingers and toes maybe stretching bending from one side to the other tickling your toes there huh? yeah. that's not the way to bring you out of it and then rolling over onto your right side And just resting there for a moment. And then when you are ready to come up into a sitting position, just pushing down on the left hand and coming back up. <laughs> so lovely to see so many of you this morning that's brilliant uh great uh, we all got up and went through what can be as i say quite a challenging routine so well done everyone